Kodak Retina 1 type 119 and uh, surprise surprise it's not happy you can't close it well what's going on here well the shutter's round at a night angle to start off with that should be somewhere around like that but it's cocked and doesn't release the plunger here doesn't look like it's doing anything good let's see if we can get that closed nearly nearly the lens looks like it's got a cataract the camera is otherwise relatively complete what's the film advance like let's have a quick look at that so I'll roll the sprocket with wheel with my thumb it does latch click the lever across the counter let moves it has all the appearance of a film advance that probably works set to rewind yes the spools will rotate the other direction so a tired little camera the shutter certainly needs some work that plunger is sticky that's extremely common um, very likely that that shaft slightly bent and that's why it's jamming but also there's a little ball on the end of that uh, shaft and basically they wear because they're bearing on a flat plate and that ball shape instead of rolling nicely over the surface tends to um, not run nicely over the surface now I can see this here it doesn't I can't push that shaft through the hole there that shaft is obviously bent that could be entertaining getting that straightened up what about the rest of the shutter yeah it, it's not um, the shutter won't release all the way now this is an interesting camera this one has the Tessar lens most of the cameras of course have the Zenar lens let's take that out, oh someone's been in here I can tell because that is not even vaguely finger tight yes well there's the shutter blades not closing or opening well a bit of investigation is called for I think well before I remove the shutter from the camera I'm just going to open up the front of it and see what I can see right well I'll just remove one screw from the name plate so I can get to the lock screw here rotate that rotate that and bayon, unbayon it that remove the speed cam ring what can we see well that's not sitting in the correct position that's sitting up the blades are not closing not very well to unhook the uh, main spring remove the main lever the blade actuating ring doesn't appear to move at all alright it's a uh, that's a properly buggered sh shutter I'll have to get that out and get it to bits I think we'll start with the shutter this time alright well the shutter's out let's get this thing to bits I'll start by removing this piece this is where the cable release would couple or in this case the plunger for the shutter release lift that out I should be able to lift this lever out this is the return lever for the shutter release 
This arm here is also where the plunger acts, so this also will release the shutter. This spring is our 500th of a second speed spring. The shutter release lever itself should come off now. It does. Be careful with that. It's got a very fine spring on the back of it. Now this lever doesn't look good. Where were we? Oh yes, here. Okay, so let's get that catch off. This is the B lever. It looks very jammed up looking there. I suspect that... No, that might be okay. Let's get the B lever off. It's a bit sticky, but it looks like it moves. The screw, little bronze bush, the lever with its return spring. This little lever can stay in place. The retard gear train swings in and out. That's behaving itself. So let's open it up from the back. Let's have a look at the diaphragm. The diaphragm is a bit dirty looking, a bit oily perhaps, nothing terrible. Three screws hold the shutter case and the mechanism plate together, so we'll have them out. This has some of these hieroglyphics all around across the back. Now the shutter blades, two of them are coming back out stuck to here, so they're very sticky. These ones here, look, oh, they're a little bit misshapen looking. I don't know what's gone on there. Let's get them off. And check this blade, this blade actuating ring. Will it move? It will move. Okay, so a problem lay with the shutter blades not wanting to move. Now they're very dirty. Whether they're dirty enough for that to have been the cause of our problem, I don't know. It may be they were catching on something. If these screws back up, they will catch a shutter blade and stop it from moving. Likewise, if these screws came loose, they could catch a shutter blade and stop it from working. This is all very dirty. These blades, you can see by the pattern on those, they've been jammed for a long time. That's not a pattern that you can get from blades in anything other than a partly open state. So this camera has probably been inoperative for a long, long time. The diaphragm, yeah, that's okay. that'll clean up. The mechanism plate. That's moving now. That lever looks bent, um, possibly because someone's been pushing like hell on the lever. That would be certainly achieve that. I will be cautious about doing anything about that in case that is the place where it's supposed to be. Sometimes the adjustments are not what you would expect. But I'll strip this thing down and see how I go. Pop those blades to one side. They do look a bit distorted. I'm not sure what's happened to those. We'll see what happens when we clean this up and put it back together. First I'll start with this mechanism plate. Off with this little lever. This lever swings the blade actuating ring backwards and forwards and the blade actuating ring of course swings the blades open and shut. Three screws hold the retainer plate here, and that screw's loose. And that screw's loose. Now that certainly suggests to me that perhaps these screws have become loose and either caught on the shutter blades or allowed the plate to move so that it's jamming the shutter blades. It looks okay. There's nothing obviously wrong with the blade actuating ring. These parts need to be cleaned. I'll pop those to one side. Deal with this. This is the shutter case. This is very dirty. I'll remove the three retainer screws on the plate and strip this and clean the blades, clean the case and reassemble everything.
two screws here hold this ring to the uh, the settings ring on the outside to the internal ring here which opens and closes the diaphragm blades we'll just remove those screws and now I have the shutter as a pile of parts somewhat dirty and unhappy looking I'll clean all this up now this is obviously looks like corrosion there to me that's not a good thing to see um, yeah, it's related to all this filth at the back. I'll clean all these parts up, we'll start reassembling it, see if we can make it go. Well here I've got my jig for assembling the diaphragm, and the diaphragm, I've got the blades all cleaned now. They were not in a bad shape, and I'm going to start laying them out on the plate. Now the blades are not symmetrical, the pins are closer to the center line of the blade at one end than they are at the other and if you muddle them up it won't go well for you So I've got to lay all these blades in position and normally I can assemble this a slightly different way but this particular shutter being an older one I can't assemble this in quite the same way I normally would as you'll see shortly now I'm back at the start of the blades now I've got to pull away the first blades to expose the holes to allow me to add more blades and of course this is um, it's easy to disturb the first blades and then you potentially could have to start all over again if you make a real mess of it which is not at all uncommon it's one of those tasks that requires you to exercise a lot of patience and it can exercise your vocabulary too when you have interesting things to say about whoever designed such a system this is the last blade you can probably hear that wind howling out there it's a very blustery day Right, now I have to lift these blades back over the last blade without disturbing anything or without catching a blade on something. And if I'm extremely lucky, nothing will have popped out of place and I'll be able to assemble my diaphragm. So I'll pop that carefully to one side without knocking it over. I've got to assemble the plate that shifts all those blades, swings them in and out. And this is the setting lever from the outside of the shutter. So I want this assembled. And in an ideal world, I'd want to give this a little wipe of molybdenum paste so it moves easily. Back shortly. Right, I'm assembling the aperture setting lever to the case now. And the screws go through from the inside. And of course you can't get to these screws when the retainer plate and the blades are in position so it's 
got to be done at this stage which makes this a little bit more tedious than dealing with later shutters where you have access to those screws after the diaphragm is assembled. So I'll just check that those two screws are done up. Now this settings lever I have put a white of molybdenum under there so that it's not uh, too stiff, it's got some drag to it, you need some drag so you don't knock the aperture settings too easily but you do not want it to be too stiff. So with this at the fully open end of the range is about there I've got to get this over that plate and get each of those pins, those little rivets to seat in the slots all at the same time. So I've got to make sure I've got this round the right way. That looks like round the right way. And lining them up there. Just wriggling that, I can feel them click into place as they drop into position. Let's hope I've got enough or all of them in position. I'll flip this jig over and get the three little screws in position that hold the retainer plate. And then, once I've got them there, just run those screws down very lightly indeed, in case any blades are mis mispositioned, I do not want to damage them by screwing this down hard on top of them. It's two. Three. Okay, I'll take that off. And I'm looking. Now my pins are correctly seated in the plate here. So I know that my the pins are correctly seated in the retainer plate. I don't know if they're correctly seated in the moving plate at the back. But as, they, as I move the lever backwards and forwards, you can see that the aperture opens and closes neatly. So that's all correct. There's no problem there. And I can do my three screws up. Check that that moves smoothly. It does. So there's the diaphragm. Those blades are all nice and clean now no oil on them, that's exactly as it should be. And the case, as you can see, is nice and clean, it's like a new one, you wouldn't think it was 80 years old. Pop that to one side, mechanism plate next. Well I'll look at the state of this mechanism plate, I'm checking the uh, retard gear train, that moves fairly freely actually, I've seen a lot worse than that. But, that having been said, it's going to need cleaning regardless. So, I'll start by giving everything a good wipe with some naphtha, just on all the exposed surfaces that I can easily get to, just to remove any built up old oil and grease, dust and dirt from the shutter taking care not to damage things like this spring because uh, 
otherwise I'd have to go and hunt through my parts boxes and look for a replacement and you can't always find replacements This is called the lens tube, this piece in the middle here. That's where the lens screws into. This doesn't look too dirty. This is looking quite good. I'm cleaning all around the back of the mechanism plate here. That's where the blade actuating ring runs. And uh, to make sure that that's all clean. Now I'm just going to set this to pull the hairspring back out of the way so that I can clean around behind there without catching a cotton bud on that hairspring and uh, damaging it. That's all that was required. That mechanism plate looks good. So I want to clean the retard gear train just flush it really with some naphtha so holding back the pallets at this end with my finger I'll work the arm backwards and forwards add a bit more naphtha and all this will do is it'll hopefully dissolve any thickened oils or wash away dust and dirt and by blowing out the solvent with the air that ensures that the solvent will take with it any impurities that it's picked up. If you just leave the solvent to evaporate, it would leave all the impurities back exactly where they, they were sitting. That's good. That's moving very freely. So, that to one side. Where's the blade actuating ring? And the retaining plate. And the screws for the retaining plate, I think this one had three short screws. I want the arm and the screw that holds the arm. Okay, so I'll clean these components. This is the retainer plate and um, Again, that needs to be all nice and clean, free from any oil or anything of that nature. It doesn't look bad. It's not clean, but it doesn't have any serious problems. With old shutters, you're always concerned about corrosion. You know, if the camera's been stored somewhere damp, or it was caught out in the rain, or dropped in the river, all sorts of other evil things that can ha happens to cameras. Excuse me. Right back as we were. If I could remember where I was up to. Well, the blade actuating ring. We want that nice and clean. That looks okay. The retainer plate. Yeah, it's a little bit marked. Nothing un untoward there. Right, let's get this in position. Now the blade actuating ring, it has a pin on it here and a post there need to couple to various things. Let's make sure we get that dropped into place correctly. I think it's there. That looks right. Otherwise the, uh, the B lever doesn't function correctly if you've got that incorrectly positioned. There should be three small screws here. I keep getting dragged away from my camera repairs today for computer repair work instead. But most of it is the dispensing advice over the phone to people who've lost their Facebook password have got
got a new piece of adware rubbish on their computer they've just downloaded and don't like that sort of thing and one computer with mystery problems which I've got busy running in the other room and uh, it may well turn out that it's mystery problems with that somebody turned it off in the middle of an update and we'll never know right pop this on here Check that the blade actuating ring moves easily and it does. Let's put its return spring on this arm. Nice snappy action. This lever here, that's the B lever and that would open that blade actuating ring if it's pushed. I suspect that's bent out of shape but I'm not going to adjust it until such time as I'm certain that it's bent out of shape because otherwise it's likely snap on me and then I'll be in trouble. I'm checking those three small screws that I put in, make sure that the short screws were in fact correct. It could do with a longer screw in there, that would certainly work. But those short ones do work. And I don't have a longer screw there, do I? No, I do not, so it's not as though I've put something in the wrong place. I've got to lubricate that with a bit of graphite powder. So let's drop a bit of graphite powder into the blade actuating ring, between the blade actuating ring and the mechanism plate. And I can just work that blade actuating ring to work that graphite powder in. That's all that's required. And the retard gear train. I usually put a bit of graphite powder on the retard gear train and then work that. That is all that's required. I'll just go and blow that graphite powder out.